Hello everybody and welcome, I am Bricker Boom, and today we're gonna see if we can beat Pokemon Fire Red with an Ash Ketchum favorite, Tauros. The only difference is we're not gonna be using 30 or so from the Safari Zone, we're just gonna be using one. If you look at Tauros, he has one of the best abilities in the game, Intimidate. He has a good attack, a better speed, and then an absolutely horrible special attack. The good news is, he can learn a wide variety of both physical and special moves, so we should be okay no matter what we end up going with. He has a slow growth rate, which means he will be slow to level up, which I don't think will be too much of a problem until we start going against some of the special attackers. For this particular run, we go ahead and give the rival Charmander. At the end of the day, I don't think it necessarily matters which one the rival picks, so I just picked one that was strong with both physical attack and special attack. We have a Jolly Nature, which raises our speed but lowers our poor special even further, but given the fact that our special is already pretty bad, I'd say that this is a pretty alright trade-off. We have Tackle to start with, and it does about a third of damage as Charmander uses Scratch. The next Tackle takes it to low yellow as it uses Growl, and then we can go ahead and take it out. While we get through the beginning of the game, if you like this kind of content, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're still plugging away with watch hours, subscriptions, you know the drill by now, especially if you've been here before. We have the opportunity to level up on some wild Pokemon as well, and the bug catchers in the forest, before doubling back and doing the optional rival fight. The rival first sends out Pidgey, and Horn Attack takes it out in one shot. Next up is Charmander, and another Horn Attack takes it to red as it uses Growl, and then we can knock it out next turn for an easy victory. Making our way back through the forest, I think Brock will actually be a bit of a problem, given him being able to resist all of our moves, but let's take a look and see how we do. He opens with Geodude, and our main strategy is just spend time attacking, Geodude likes to swap between Defense Curl and Tackle, so Tail Whip wouldn't do much to help us. We do manage to take it down, but with only 18 HP as Onyx comes out and nails us with Rock Tomb. We can do a bit more damage to it with Tackle, but it does end up taking us out. Ultimately, we're not doing quite enough damage, so we end up leveling up to 14, and then we give it another shot. With a couple more levels under our belt, Geodude is still about a 6 shot, but this time focuses more on defense curling than tackling, so we have plenty of health by the time Onyx comes out. We do use Tail Whip to soften it up a little, and it just flat out misses a few times with Rock Tomb. Because of that, we're able to brute force our way through the fight, though if he kept landing those Rock Tombs, I have a feeling that we probably would have had to take a few more tries. Good news is, we have plenty of trainers we're able to fight along the way to Cerulean City. Leveling up early is hopefully going to save us some heartache as we get a little later into the run, but we have a choice to make of either fighting the rival or immediately going for the second gym badge, and this time around I opt for the latter. It'll give us a decent peek at how badly special attacks will hurt us since that's typically what the Starmie relies on. Misty first sends out Staryu and we open up with Horn Attack, taking it to low red as it uses Harden. Misty heals up and we use Horn Attack again, this time taking it to low yellow before taking it out next turn. Starmie is up next and we use another Horn Attack, taking it to almost half as Water Pulse hits hard, but it doesn't confuse us. We take it to red and get hit down to 17 HP, but due to no confusion, we can take it out and win the second badge. Like I said, my boy can dish out the physical attacks and tank him like a champ, but when it comes to anything and everything special related, he's immediately turned into a Squishmallow. A Toro Squishmallow would actually be pretty cute. After that, we go to the rival and see how we do, and he sends out Pidgeotto first, which we miss with the first Rock Tomb. Hit it to red with the second as we get hit. We can then take him out, and next up is Rattata, and we miss with Rock Tomb before the Horn Attack takes us out. Charmander is up, and we take it to red with another attack, as it just uses Growl, and we can take it down. Now, unfortunately, we get burnt before taking it out, and our attack gets cut so badly, we don't even take Abra out in one shot anymore. We end up taking it out the second turn, but due to the burn damage, it was actually a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. With the rival out of the way, we can go ahead and take out the trainers to the north, and we're going to be going on the ship shortly after. We do want to make sure to fight some of the trainers aboard the ship, but we also don't have to worry about leveling too much. 
overall, Tauros is actually really good for solo runs, at least better than I thought. Also, as a quick self-promo while we're going through all this, make sure to check out my daily shorts. We're posting every single Pokemon and giving it an under 60 second review. Once I'm finished with Gen 1, I'll be putting all the videos in a single video file and posting it that way if you're interested in the long form content. We're starting a podcast, and I think that's all I have left to promo. Oh, and we have a Patreon. If you want a specialized avatar like these two and you want to do some support outside of YouTube and Twitch, this is a good way to do it. I'm gonna be 100% honest. I'm not great with it just yet, but I plan to get better as time goes on. In the meantime, we make it to the rival and he starts off with Pidgeotto and we open up at the Rock Tomb, taking it out in one shot. Next up is Raticate and we swap over to Horn Attack, taking it out as well. Kadabra's out, easily the scariest of his mons, but it also goes down to a single shot. Last up is Charmeleon, and we can take it to red with Horn Attack, get hit with Ember, and then knock it out. That lets us grab Cut, and then we can head to the gym. Looking at the gym, this is probably the quickest that we have ever completed the trash can puzzle. I don't know if the curse is broken, but if it is, and this is how future runs are going to go, I'm okay with that. Now, because I've mentioned it, next time we'll spend a half hour trying to get through it because that's my usual luck, but I'll take it for what it is, and let's go ahead and fight Surge. Surge starts off with Voltorb, and Horn Attack takes it out in one shot. Next up is Pikachu, and as much as I don't want to risk the static, we continue with Horn Attack and take it out with a critical hit, and thankfully avoid Paralysis. Now, Raichu actually lives through an attack in the yellow and uses Thunder Wave against us, it then uses Double Team, but thankfully we can push past both of those things, take it out, and win the battle. Now, to be 100% vulnerable with y'all, recently, during my shorts, I've been called a Discord mod because Reddit is a thing, and because people can't be creative with insults, and I am going to use that as a shameless opportunity to bring up that if you are wanting to join a Pokemon-loving community, the Discord link will be below, and yes... I am a mod! The Dark Cave isn't too bad, and it's to the point where we barely even need the map anymore because we've done probably about 30 Pokemon Fire Red challenges by now. I want to do some more challenges in other games, but aside from Emerald, the other games take so much time. I'll work on them when I can, but something that I was watching was Madrai Bread do a solo run in Heart Gold and he wasn't able to get past red, it makes me wonder how many Pokemon, evolved or not, are actually capable of beating the game. So I'd love to play that a bit more with Pokemon that maybe you think could beat the game. So if you had to choose what Pokemon, aside from legendaries, do you think can beat the game on their own? The most powerful one that I used was Heracross, and well, if you want to know how that ended, just make sure to go ahead and check out the video. My curiosity takes me all the way to Celadon City, and we can go ahead and fight Giovanni for the first time. Now this might be difficult given the fact that we don't have many special moves, and even the one that we have isn't that great. Giovanni sends out Onyx, and we honestly just pass on using Pursuit. It's rough having to rely on Brute Force for Rock types, but we do manage to take it out. Thankfully Onyx has a horrible attack. And we still have 82 HP when Rhyhorn comes out, and three turns later, we're able to take it down. Last is Kangaskhan, and it goes down to three attacks, only hitting a bite in the meantime. If Giovanni would have just, you know, attacked, we probably would have lost a couple times. Now that we're not playing with a Relicanth that's four times weak to Erika, we head to that gym next. Erika first sends out Victory Bell, and we open up with Return to take it to the low red with a single attack before getting hit with Stun Spore. Erika then heals up, and we use Return again to take it back to red. Erika now outspeeds and uses Giga Drain, and we stay paralyzed, but next turn we can take it out. Tangela is next and uses Ingrain, and we stay paralyzed again. Giga Drain does a bit, and then we use Return to take it to low red. Another Giga Drain takes us to 24 HP. We take it out with Return, but it's not looking good. Vileplume takes us to 2 HP with Giga Drain, and we don't take it out with Return, so we get taken out. About 6 attempts later, and we can take Victory Bell to red as usual, but this time with Victory Bell and Tangela both, 
you can see that we actually don't spend too many turns being fully paralyzed. And then when Vile Plume comes out, it does take us all the way down to 6 HP, but we're able to critical hit it with a return and it goes down, letting us win the battle in the badge. With the fourth badge down and the first loss to Timson's Brock, I'm feeling pretty good about this run. I think when we get to the Elite Four, we may have some trouble the more I think about it. Lorelei uses special attack, Bruno has fighting moves, Agatha, well, that's always going to be a gamble given the fact we can't hit each other much, and then Lance is always a bit rough, and then the rival will typically try to plan out our four attacks to give us the best chance of survival. And speaking of the rival, it's time to face off against him in the tower. And if you hear my dog barking, I apologize. How dare the neighbors be out on the sidewalk at this point? Pidgeotto goes down to a single return, and then next up is Gyarados, who lowers our attack. We swap over to Rock Tomb and miss, and it uses Thrash. The next Rock Tomb connects, and we get hit with another Thrash. Return after that does the trick. Execute is next, so we use Return to take it to Red, as it sets up Leech Seed, which is annoying, but I'd rather have that than Paralysis. The next turn, we can knock it out. Kadabra is next, and we still outspeed at this level, and Return knocks it out in one go. Last but not least is Charmeleon, and we can take it to red, get hit with Smokescreen, miss return, and then both Ember and Leech Seed takes us down to 3 HP before we break past that, take it out, win the battle, but I'm gonna be honest, that was far closer than I would have hoped. With that out of the way, we can go ahead, finish out the tower, and do our laundry list of tasks, including Cycling Road, the Safari Zone, and clearing out the trainers in Koga's gym. With Koga, he first sends out Coughing, and we open up with Return to take it to Red as it opens with Toxic. Koga heals up, and we use Return again to take it back to Red, and then we can take it down the next turn. Muck is next, so we continue using Return, taking it to Yellow as it uses Minimize as Toxic damage ramps up. Thankfully, we still connect with the next Return and take it down, though we both know that the next bout of Toxic damage will take us down, and we inevitably go down. The next attempt is kind of weird because the first three of Koga's Pokemon just don't bother using Toxic, despite having ample opportunity to do so. So with that, we can take out the first three of his Pokemon, and then with Weezing, we hit it and take it to red, and it finally uses Toxic, but at this point it doesn't have the opportunity to ramp up in damage, so we're able to take it out and win the battle without too much trouble. <clears throat> Five gems down, and I have to say, Tauros is definitely proving to be a really good Pokemon. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. I don't know if we'll be able to beat the Sylphco rival at our current level, but Sylphco is where we need to head to. We don't focus too much on the multiple grunts aside from the few areas to get to the key card, access to the bed, and then in case we do need to grind, it is available, but we go ahead and head straight for the rival. The rival opens up with Pidgeot, and we start with using Return to take it to Red as it uses Wing Attack, and we can take it out next turn. After that, it's Gyarados, and we swap over to Rock Tomb, taking it to not quite half as it uses Bite. We swap over to Return, and that thankfully takes it out. After that, it's Charizard, and we use Rock Tomb, taking it below half and lower its speed, as Charizard uses Scary Face. Due to the lowered speed with Rock Tomb, I think that's why we still outspeed it and take it down with a critical hit return. Execute is next, we use Return, taking it to half as it misses Stun Spore, and the next return thankfully takes it out. Last but not least is Alakazam, and it just uses Calm Mind, so we can take it out with a single attack. If it had just used any attack whatsoever, we probably would have gone down, but maybe the AI didn't recognize a one-shot, but we won, and we can move on to Giovanni. Nidorino is up first, and we use Return and take it down with one shot. Next up is Nido Queen, and we open up with Return, taking it to below half as we get hit with a weak Poison Sting, and then we can take it out next turn. With the Kangaskhan, we use Return, taking it below half, and it uses Rage, which is horrible, and then we can take it out. Last up is Rhyhorn, and we can test damage with Return, because that's about our best option. After that, it's mostly just trading attacks back and forth for the duration of the battle, 
and for whatever reason it uses Scary Face, so we can outdo its damage output, and that wins the battle. That whole tower actually went smoother than I thought, but can we keep it up with Sabrina? The answer is a resounding yes. Yes, we can. We're actually able to one-shot every member of her team and move on from there. If they had the opportunity to attack, I'm not so sure it would have ended the same, but it doesn't matter. Let's move on. We go to Cinnabar, do the Burnt Mansion, and just to be sure, we actually go ahead and fight through the trainers here. Blaine starts with Growlithe, and we can take down both the Growlithe and the Ponyta down with a single return. When Rapidash comes out, we can take it to Red and it hits us with Fire Blast. After that, Blaine spends a few turns healing up before we finally take it down. As Arcanine comes out, we can take about a quarter of its health, and it takes us all the way to 7 HP with Fire Blast, and then we connect with another attack before it uses Bite and take us down. Unfortunately, even with the chance of Fire Blast missing, we have to level up twice, mostly to guarantee the KO on the Ponyta. Due to the Intimidation drop from Growlithe, we sometimes weren't able to take it out if we got an incredibly low roll on the damage. By the time we get to Rapidash, we can repeat the same process, taking it to red and going back and forth a little bit. After that, we just get a critical hit on the Arcanine and take it down to win the battle. Not how I planned, but okay, let's go. We have one more gym battle to go. We end up replacing Pursuit with Water Pulse because even though we don't have good special attack, the super effective damage will outweigh the poor special, hopefully. The Rhyhorn goes down to a single Water Pulse and we take about a third of Nidoqueen's Queen's health as she hits us with Earthquake, and then we can take it down with Return. With Nidoking, King, we end up repeating the process, but we only have 42 HP remaining. After that, the Doug Trio is thankfully a one-shot with Return, and the other Rhyhorn goes down to Water Pulse, and that wins us the battle. With eight badges down, we have one more pre-Elite 4 battle to go. The Rival first sends out Pidgeot, and we can take it to Yellow with Return, as it hits pretty hard with Wing Attack before going down. The Rhyhorn then goes down to Water Pulse. After that, the Execute goes down to a single return, and we can take Alakazam to red with Earthquake, as it only uses Calm Mind before going down to return. As Gyarados comes out, we hit it with return, it hits with Hydro Pump, and then we critical hit to take it down. Last up is Charizard, and we take about a fifth of its health, and then we get immediately taken down by Flamethrower. That's not great. We try a few different times, but unfortunately, we're just not able to take it down. We can usually get to the Charizard, but Flamethrower does so much damage to us, we have no shot in winning, and also the fact that it's 100% accurate. The Charizard is just always able to take us down, but let's see how we do at level 60. With this level, we can take down the Pidgeot in one turn with Return. After that, the Rhyhorn, we're moving too fast and hit Return to take it to about half. Thankfully, we don't get punished, and it misses Takedown, so we knock it out with Water Pulse. Execute and Alakazam are both one-shot each with Return. With Gyarados, we take it to half as it sets up Rain Dance, which is best-case scenario for us because we can take it down with a final return, and now Charizard's fire moves won't be doing as much. After that, just like with Blaine, we get a critical hit against the Charizard to take it out, and we can move on. With the final pre-Elite 4 battle out of the way, we can go ahead and make our way through Victory Road, and in no time at all, it's time to see how we do against Lorelei. With Dugong, we take it to Red, as it uses Safeguard, and then Lorelei heals up. We take it to about half with the next move, and then finish it off with Return. With Cloyster, we know it's gonna stall with Protect, so we just use Horn Attack. Not wanting to waste Returns or Earthquake on it, that's why we keep using that. With Slowbro, we can hit it with Earthquake as it uses Yawn. We hit it with Return and go to sleep as it uses Surf. We do wake up in time and manage to take it down, but we only have 12 HP left as we use Earthquake and it knocks us out. At level 65, it still takes two Earthquakes to take down the Dugong, and it only sets up Safeguard. The Cloyster is still the biggest pain, given how thick its defense is, even with its meager special defense, our special attack is equally as bad, so we're not really doing much. With Slowbro, we can hit it with Earthquake as it uses Amnesia, and Return takes it to Red. Surf hits us to 84, and then we can take it out. 
With Lapras, we take it below half, the berry heals it up, and it hits us to 27 HP with Ice Beam, and then another return can take it down. Last up is Jinx, who is thankfully a one-shot, and it goes down. After that, it's time for Bruno, and Onyx goes down to Water Pulse, and then next up is Hitmonchan. We can take it to Red, and Bruno full restores, and we take it back to Red, and then take it out. Hitmonlee goes down to one-shot, and then with Machamp, we can take it to Yellow, and the berry heals it back to half. Rock Tomb doesn't do too much, but lowers our speed, but we're still able to take it out without being punished. Last is Onyx, and we can take it to red as Onyx hits back with Earthquake, and then we take it down. Now, you're gonna see a little bit of a jump in the levels here, because we made the mistake of not packing along the proper TMs to go against Agatha, and in turn Lance as well. So after that, we fight through all the Elite Four, and we use Iron Tail. Iron Tail will take the first Gengar to yellow, as it uses Confuse Ray, and we smack ourselves as it sets up Double Team. We do miss a few times, but we do end up taking it out a few turns later. When Golbat comes out, we take it to red and get hit with Confuse Ray, as Agatha heals up and we can take it down two turns later. When Arbok comes out, we can take it to red with Earthquake and get hit with Sludge before taking it down. With the next Gengar, thankfully we don't miss any Iron Tails, and it goes down three turns later. When Haunter's out, both of us missed our first attack, then hit it and lower its defense as it only uses Mean Look. Agatha heals up and then it goes down due to the lower defense. Next up is Lance. Gyarados is first and Thunderbolt takes it to yellow as it uses Bite then goes down. Aerodactyl's next and we do about a fifth of damage, but we paralyze it. It uses Scary Face twice, so we're able to take it down without taking damage. Dragonite is next, and it hits hard with Outrage, but we can use Return to take it out with a critical hit. Dragonair uses Safeguard as we take it to yellow, and it uses Hyper Beam, but misses, so then we can take it out. The next Dragonair uses Thunder Wave, and we hit it with Return, and then it uses Hyper Beam to take us to 61 HP before going down, and now we can move on to the champ. Now, over the next little bit of time, while I explain the strategy here, I'm just going to roll the footage of some of the battles. More often than not, we can make it to Charizard, but it just wipes us out with Fire Blast. Unfortunately, due to the intimidation drops we suffer along the way, we're not able to do enough damage output, even if it misses once. There's also the damage that we suffer along the way, or sand attacks from Pidgeot. It's just a long line of losing attempts until we get to level 80, and 4 attempts in. And I cannot believe how this plays out. With Pidgeot, we deal a critical hit return, which takes it down in one shot. Alakazam goes down to one return, and then with Exeggutor, we take it to red as it opts not to attack in any way, shape, or form and only sets up light screen. The rival then only spends a few turns healing, and then we can take it down. With Rhydon, we get another critical hit, and that takes it down. With Gyarados, we hit it with Thunderbolt, paralyze it, and it misses its attack, so it goes down. And then as Charizard comes out, we hit it with Return, and it uses Slash, and not Fire Blast for whatever reason, so it goes down one turn later, and that very, very weird and very luck-based battle is what wins us the challenge. That was definitely not something I expected when I started this many attempts, this was a great run, and there were a few rough patches here and there, but overall I enjoyed using Tauros, and hope that you enjoyed the video as well. I'm not 100% sure what I'll be doing next week, but I'll take a peek through the Pokedex and probably get to work on it this evening after the editing is finished. And, as always, if you liked the video even if you didn't like the video, hit the like and subscribe button, because it really does help me out. And until next time everybody, peace out!